So we've talked a lot about discount factors and, and uh, contingent claims when markets are complete. What about when markets are incomplete? That is, of course, the world we live in, so it's worth talking about. So here's our question. You see some prices and payoffs, and the markets are incomplete. Is there a discount factor such that the prices can be represented as expected discounted payoff? How do you construct such a discount factor? In the end, we're not here for philosophy. We're here for construction. And being able to construct a discount factor to represent prices is, of course, a, a very useful thing to be able to do. We're going to build up to two theorems about the existence of the discount factor. Uh, first, first one is based on the law of one price. And if the law of one price holds, then there is a unique payoff, x star, that can act as a discount factor. Uh, second one, um, if there's no arbitrage, a different condition, then we'll find there's a strictly positive discount factor. The law of one price and no arbitrage are a lot weaker than a utility function, but they are basic assumptions about what investors do and how they behave. OK, let's do the first theorem. The law of one price and how it implies that there exists a discount factor x star. You got to meet the players and the assumptions. The payoff space, which I'll call x with an underscore, is incomplete. We have to talk about the set. Since it's incomplete, we have to talk about the kinds of payoffs that investors can get. Incomplete means it's no longer the full RS. When there's s states of nature, it means it's some subset of RS. So two examples. Uh, here is when there are two states of nature. Uh, suppose there's only a single payoff x, nothing else is traded, then the payoff space is, well, you can buy more or less of that thing, but you can't buy anything else. You can't get your way here. So that's a market that is incomplete because that's the payoff space. Another example in three dimensions. So now we have up, down, and into the board as our three dimensions. There are two payoffs, x1 and x2, two vectors out there. The payoff space is all portfolios of x1 and x2. You can move around on the plane, but you can't get off the plane, so the market is incomplete. The payoff space, again, payoffs are not returns. Payoffs can have prices of 2, 0, or anything else. Don't confuse payoffs and returns. OK, there's a payoff space which is limited. We're going to make two assumptions about that payoff space. First that investors can make any portfolio. In other words, if x1 and x2 are traded, then the investors can, can also access any portfolio of x1 and x2, including short positions. That's why I've drawn the payoff space as the hyperplanes here extending from x1 and x2, not x x1 and x2 themselves. That's an important assumption, and it's totally false in reality. I'm saying there's no short sale constraints. There's no bid ask spreads. There's no transactions costs. Uh, of course, you can generalize to all of those things. There are versions of the theory that does all those things. But that's not the assumption we're going to start with. We're going to start with perfect trading. Second assumption, the law of one price or the linearity of the pricing function. That just says that if, if we can take a portfolio of two payoffs, AX1 plus BX2, the price of the portfolio is the sum of the prices of the individual elements. The, the daily special is the same as on the a la carte menu. That's a mild sort of rationality. Almost, we, don't, we use the word arbitrage for something else. But you can tell if the, arbitrage, if the on, a la carte menu was different from the daily specials, and you could sell back to the restaurant as well as buy from them, you'd make a fortune. Prices and payoffs like that wouldn't last very long. Those are our two basic assumptions. Now, to our theorem. The theorem is that if those assumptions hold, then read slowly. There is a unique discount factor x star in the payoff space such that the price of any payoff is expected discounted by x star payoff for any payoff x in that payoff space. That's a theorem about the existence of a discount factor. Why is that a true theorem? Well, I'll offer you uh, two arguments. First, geometry. Our assumption, the law of one price, says that the pricing function is linear. We've seen what a linear pricing function looks like. The price hyperplanes have to move out like that. Well, geometrically, uh, if, if you have a linear function, any linear function like that can be represented by there's some x star. There's x star. And all these prices are generated as inner products with x star 
that's constructed to be uh, orthogonal to the price hyperplanes, right? Any, any vector on P1 here has, uh, has the, any vector on P1 here has the same inner product with X star and therefore generates the same price. An algebraic argument is easy when we have uh, finite states. So let me give you that. Now first, Let's think about a case where there is a vector of payoffs. There's n different securities. Now watch it. There's two kinds of vectors here. Each one of these securities is a payoff with a random variable. So each element here is a random variable, or you can think of it as a vector in Rs. But there's n of them. So there's n securities. The vector x, x is in Rn. It is a vector of random variables. Don't confuse n and s. If we have that set of securities, then the payoff space is all linear combinations of those securities where the, the weights are in Rn. So you can weight the securities different amounts. Now, what we want to know is, is there a payoff of that form that acts as a discount factor? I'm just going to pull it out of my hat, uh, though if you take five minutes, you can figure out what it is from first principles. There it is, P prime E of X, X prime inverse times X. Let's just check that that thing pulled out of a hat works the way it's supposed to work. Is that a in the payoff space? Well, P prime E of X, X prime inverse, that's a set of weights that's known ahead of time. So that is a set of portfolio weights times the original payoff. That is a weighted sum of the original payoffs. That is an available payoff. Check one. That's the easy part. The hard part, let's check that it does what it's supposed to do. That X star, if I take that X star and multiply it by all of the pay, any of the payoffs, or all of them, do I get the prices back? Well, just plug in. X star, let's just plug in, is P E of X, X prime inverse times X, and then we multiply by the X. Now take expectations, and voila, E of X, X prime, in, prime cancels E of X, X prime inverse, and we're left with the prices. It works by construction. It was constructed to work. Fine, it works. That one may seem a little bit artificial. Let's take a, a, more, a more common example. If we start with a set of returns, a set of price one securities, this will make it a little more concrete. The X star, the payoff is a vector of ones, the second moment matrix of returns uh, times the vector of returns. This is, is related to, this will look to you a little bit like mean variance efficient formulas, and there's a close relationship which we'll come to later. Uh, now, this is almost a proof. What about when S is infinite? That takes a little bit more mathematics. It's called the Rietz representation theorem, and it basically states in infinite dimensional spaces that exactly this is true. In an infinite dimensional space, there is still always an element of that space uh, which can generate a linear functional. So it's just that, but with infinite dimensions.